God can take a dark, dark, ugly, twisted place that you are in. (laughs) And set you free from yourself sometimes. You might think, I've gone too far. I'm way past that boundary. Where I'm, where I'm at and where I'm heading is so deep in darkness that God would not want to rescue me there. I tell you, yes, He does. Because I was as deep and as far as I could imagine myself ever being. <laughs> and He met me there. Hi, my name is Elaine Lopez. Um, and coming to Kingsway for about, since 2015, off and on. Um, this place is home for me. So even being able to have the opportunity to share my testimony in this place is a, a profound moment for me, definitely. Um, my story is one of trauma, but that's not where it ends. It, it ends with Jesus freedom because that's what he does he sets you free (laughs) Um, for most of my life I wanted acceptance I wanted to be loved I didn't feel worthy of love because I thought I had to work at that work at being loved by God by friends by other people in general. And that led me to really think that my worth wasn't found in how God created me, but more my body. So I used my body to be able to get love. I thought that was the way to do that. So I spent a lot of years in relationships that were not healthy because I thought if I just give my body and give of myself, no matter the boundaries that were crossed, I'd be loved. They'd accept me and then someone would want me. Someone would love me because I wasn't looking for love in the place where love is. And that's God because he is love. I wasn't looking there. I was looking elsewhere. Came to the year 2007. I um, ended up in a relationship where um, I thought I found someone who could love me completely. They said all the right things. They promised me that they'd take care of me, that they'd be there, that they'll marry me. And they said everything that my heart desired to hear. And I was like, yes, I am all for it. So I left home. I left everything I knew to move in with this person. And uh, it was good in the beginning. Despite everybody telling me, you know, a lot of warnings because they could see what I couldn't at the time. But I thought, you give people a chance, you know? I know them more intimately, so I, I see things they don't. So go into about two or three months of living with this person. And it went from the person always, you know, being really nice and telling me that they loved me, that they thought I was beautiful and wanting to just cater to me and take care of me to calling me ugly, calling me stupid, calling me worthless, trash. (laughs) Every day. Now at this time, I didn't have a job. I didn't have money because they said they would take care of me. So I, I wasn't working at the time and I didn't have anything of my own. I left everything. So I really depended on this person to kind of carry me and be there and be like, my support. But 
every day you, I wake up and it's the same thing. Just, you know, you can't do this right. You're, you're not doing that right. And you're not good enough. And why am I with you? And why are you here? And, and wanting to prove every day that I was worthy. So I stayed because I thought if I could just show you what you saw in the beginning, I don't know what I did to lose favor, but if I could show you, it'll be enough. But it wasn't enough because it, no, no matter what I tried to do to appease this anger that this person had, it, it wasn't enough. There was just verbal abuse. There was mental abuse, um, sexual abuse. And I think for me, it was what I thought I deserved because I started believing what he was telling me. I thought, well, if I wasn't like, if I wasn't garbage or if I wasn't trash or if I wasn't this or if I'd just done this right, if I'd just done that right, <laughs> um, then he'll love me again. And it became where one night the abuse, just the constant verbal abuse, the mental abuse, the physical abuse, the sexual abuse just came to a head. And then in that night, I hadn't eaten for days because the abuse was just so demoralizing. I, I just, I didn't want to eat. And he said that I shouldn't eat. He said, you don't deserve to eat. So I was being starved at the same time. And I thought, I, didn't, I don't deserve to eat. And I think the mental abuse that I was just taking just was too much. And he locked me away in a room. And I was locked inside. And I couldn't get out unless, the pers unless he let me out. And um, the night where it really got ugly was when he forced me to drink and then was just a completely split personality type of situation. And left me to, to be locked away in the room after a barrage of just like the abuse, left me in the room and then went to sleep. I found out I was pregnant um, in between this time. And was told that if I kept the baby, I, he'd kill me. So, you know, I, I, I made the choice not to keep the baby out of a lot of fear. Doesn't make it right, I don't, agree with abortion, period. But in that place of my mind where I was at that time, I just wanted to be loved. And if it, I was so broken and lost. And then I was told that I wasn't worth anything anymore, so why keep you around? Why should I keep you around was what he said, and he planned and told me to my face that the next morning he'd already plotted it out to have me killed. <laughs> um, I went to sleep that night with him in the bed and in fear just crying out to God, like in my head, praying, sobbing, just like, Lord, just, I don't know how I'm gonna get out, but I need to because 
this is not, this is not where you have me. And I, I, I don't want to die this way. The next morning, and this is where Jesus shows himself. The grace of God shows itself. That even when I was at my worst, the next morning, the plan was put in place from what he said. And um, of course, I don't have access to being able to get out of the house because I live so far away and where we lived was kind of like in the wooded areas. So I had no way of getting out. And God made a way because during that time, he'd been getting harassment calls, I guess, from my dad. And he complained and had called the cops. Now, mind you, I asked God to make a way for help to come because I couldn't access a phone. I didn't have anything to be able to get help. And my abuser himself had called the cops for that situation. And when the cops stepped in asking me questions, I didn't say anything because he was still there, my abuser. And um, I remember the cop asking me, you know, do you speak English? Is there some reason why you're not talking? And I remember signaling to the cop with my eyes, looking at him and then looking back at my abuser, trying to correlate why I wasn't speaking. And I know it's God because the cop understood and told my abuser, go do what you have to do. And when you come back, we'll have this situation settled. And because he left, I told the cop what happened and what was going on. And I was able to get my stuff and get a restraining order and leave. (laughs) God can take a dark, dark, ugly, twisted place that you are in. (laughs) And set you free from yourself sometimes. You might think, I've gone too far. I'm way past that boundary. Where I'm, where I'm at and where I'm heading is so deep in darkness that God would not want to rescue me there. I tell you, yes, he does. Because I was as deep and as far as I could imagine myself ever being. <laughs> and he met me there. And I walked out without me ever even, him ever touching me, him making one word of a threat that day. (laughs) And being able to go back home. I'm not defined by the abuse or by what he said. (laughs) I'm defined by the one who stepped in and told me, you're worth it. I'm worth it. You're worth it. God didn't look at the situation and tell me, I'm gonna leave you there because you made your bed. So you lay in it. And that's what the world would do. But in the darkness that I was in, that I put myself into, God gracefully, in his love, in his abundance of love, and in saying, you are known, I know you, you I see. (laughs) I have called you by name. You are mine, Isaiah 43, one and two. And I love that verse because you are known. He does know you by name. You're not lost in a sea of people and just a face. You have a name. And it's not the name that the world calls you. And it's not the name that you you might even call yourself or that your family has called you. 
It's the name that God calls you. In his word, he says you're worthy, you're loved, you're known, you're seen, you're valued, that nothing can separate you from his love. Those are the words that I cherish every day because he walked me out of a dark place to show me what real love was in him. Real love does not require you to allow people to cross boundaries, to put yourself in dangerous places, to take abuse, and to think that you have to somehow work at proving yourself. You already had purpose from the moment, even before you were born. Before I formed you, I knew you. That's what God's word says. Jeremiah 1.5, I believe. <sighs> Even before you were formed, he knew you. That's a love that is worth everything. And that nothing in this world could ever match. And you don't have to strive for it. You don't have to beg for it. You don't have to give up of yourself, your body, your mind, your will for it. You're loved fully. All you have to do is receive it and say yes. You can call out to him no matter how dark it is. He'll come. He'll come.